Hello everyone and for Women in India is back with another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about the government elections in Brazil and the chaos that followed. On January 1, 2023, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, nicknamed Lula, was sworn in as the president of Brazil for the third time after his presidency from 2003 to 2011. It was the most polarized election since the 1985 military CC3 dictatorship in Brazil, when he increased his lead over right-wing incumbent Jair Bolsonaro. The extreme right-wing president Jair Bolsonaro became the first candidate to lose his re-election bid since Brazil's return to democracy in 1989. Moreover, the first election loss in his three-decade political career. Bolsonaro served as the 38th president of Brazil from January 1, 2019 to 31st December 2022 and also served from 1991 to 2018 in Brazil's Chamber of Deputies representing the state of Rio de Janeiro. Bolsonaro's presidency had a lot of impact on the economy, mainly focused on his stimulus policy. A few notable impacts are pro-indigenous people policy were never effectively implemented. A spike in deforestation in the world's largest rainforest under Bolsonaro's administration led to global condemnation. Bolsonaro's government served illegal logging concern under the rug, cutting down trees on protected land and burning the remaining ones for cattle ranching and mining. Late response during COVID-19 resulted in the poor compaction of the disease despite the peak cases. The dramatic expansion of gun rights has increased violence over the past years. The 2022 election contest between the left wing and the right wing was widely described as a knife-edge contest with Lula winning 50.9% of the votes while Bolsonaro 49.1% of the votes. However, when the election results proclaimed on 30th October 2022, Bolsonaro remained out of public eye. His silence that lasted for over 48 hours turned out into huge protests and blockades on the streets by his supporters, who could not accept the result. The protests continued ever since the results were proclaimed and hence turned out to be so severe after Lula took his seat as the president on January 1, 2023. Furthermore, the violence we are seeing now was predicted by Brazilian officials when Bolsonaro raised concern about possible voter fraud. This, in fact, could be as per his statement on his campaign trail, where he told his supporters to brace for a fight that indeed should be a war if it was necessary. With millions of votes cast on machines devoid of individual identification numbers as a result of software bug during the 2022 elections, Bolsonaro and his party sought to nullify the votes cast on these machines. The request, however, didn't mention the way the bug might have affected the result and independent experts being positive that it wouldn't undermine reliability in any way. The request was dismissed swiftly by the electoral authorities president who imposed a huge fine on the party. Though political violence was common near elections, the alarming trend that we see now has turned so aggressive, resulting in the lives of many. The scene almost reflects the status of Donald Trump in the US after losing to President Joe Biden. Bolsonaro fled off to the US to Florida before January 1st before swearing off his rival. Staying close to his ally Donald Trump after a violent surge that sparked accusation that it was his actions that stroked flames of dissent and ultimately produced the uprising. Pedro Henrique Diaz, 28, was murdered in Belo Horizonte while celebrating Lula's victory on October 30th. As per a survey, there has been an average of four acts of violence per day ahead of an extremely violent campaign. One of the officials claimed that over 70% of the cases of attackers were considered to be white cisgender men who were political agents. With the protests in the spring from the election campaigns, thousands of Brazilians who support Bolsonaro invaded the Supreme Court on January 8, which closely resembled the US Capitol invasion back in 2021. The mob violence lasted for hours and was stated as unprecedented in the country's history. President Lula termed the rioters as fanatical fascists and vowed that all rioters will be traced and punished. There has been a massive rise in right-wing extremism. In an article by Foreign Policy, a US-based magazine, it lists the continued rise in violence against African American in the US and against refugees, immigrants and Muslims around the world. It specifically mentions Prime Minister Narendra Modi's name in actively enabling right-wing violence against Muslims. Countering misinformation and fact-checking news is one of the important steps countries can make to counter right-wing extremism. You can also help your country by verifying all the news and information you read on social media. 
Thank you. That's all for the video. If you like our work, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. If you like our work, please do consider contributing on our Patreon page. The link is in the description box.